Hello, good afternoon. Thanks very much, everybody, for joining us this afternoon. This is the Asia FinTech Bootcamp Demo Day, co-delivered by F10 and Street. Very warm welcome. I'm Betty San Lucas. I'm the FinTech Specialist Director from Austrid. Um, for some of you who do not know Austrid, we're Australia Trade and Investment Government Agency. We help the Australian companies to connect to the world and the world to the Australian um, yes, to Australia business. So today we're very lucky to have a special guest, um, Australia, <laughs> Australia High Commissioner to Singapore, His Excellency Will Hochman. So without further ado, uh, please join me to welcome Will. Thanks very much um, for the warm introduction and, uh, and good afternoon everyone. I'm, I'm delighted uh, to be here and to be in a group of this size, which none of us have been able to enjoy so much until, until recently. Um, but I really hope that this program that you've been involved with um, has delivered very positive results for you and helped build some important um, connections. I want to also acknowledge um, the Austrade Senior Trade and Investment Commissioner, Stephen Scully, who of course uh, will be centre stage in just a moment. Um, and to thank Betty, who's a dynamo in this sector and a very inspirational leader, a very passionate um, supporter of the fintech sector and especially how Australia can enhance its connections and to collaborate with one of our closest and most trusted partners, Singapore. Um, so thank you, Betty, for bringing this to life and bringing us all together today. Um, I also want to thank F10, um, and Stephen was telling me over lunch how um, thrilled Austrade is to be able to partner um, with F10, whose credentials are well established, um, and we find um, it's a neat fit for, for Austrade. Um, so thank you uh, sincerely uh, to, to Jonas and the team for um, your contribution and your commitment to the program, which I'm told over the last three weeks has involved um, a number of important uh, events, roundtables, masterclasses, importantly also mentorship, which is so important in all lines of work. Um, so to those who've donated, volunteered their time, their expertise, especially making business connections um, and potentially further opportunities for collaboration, um, I hope that's especially valuable also for the participants. Um, and to the seven graduating uh, businesses, the fintechs represented here, thanks very much for being involved. Um, we do think that this sort of program, we hope, will provide those opportunities, uh, but without the participants um, and without ongoing work, and that's something that the Australian High Commission and Austrade especially will be really keen to monitor your progress uh, and to lend further assistance where we can in help building that bridge uh, that fintech bridge that we speak so often about. It's great to hear also uh, that this was far greater than just our Australian post here, but seven other countries involved um, in, in this region, um, and including also in India uh, and Japan, along with uh, our neighbouring countries. And that's especially important too, I'm told, it comprises 25% of the world's population. It's obviously a very important market for Australia, but also your sector. And um, with the, the combination of two of the world's uh, most vibrant fintech and digital um, economies in Australia and Singapore, there's not only enormous opportunity for collaboration uh, between our countries, and there is, with our governments recently committing to digital economy agreements, green economy agreements, a fintech bridge, all these we hope will provide important infrastructure from which business can prosper and grow, but also use Singapore um, as a launch pad into the rest of Southeast Asia and that enormous uh, market that was also represented in this program too. So sincere thanks for your involvement. As I say, the, the commitment from Austrade and from the Australian High Commission is to continue to work with you on this exciting journey that you've embarked in. Um, so our very best wishes for your futures. Thank you. Thank you very much, Will. And now I would like to welcome on the stage um, Jonas. Jonas is the head of F10 for Asia. He's going to share with us the programs 
for the past three weeks. Thank you, Betty. Also, really a warm welcome from my side. It's been a great privilege to, to run this program to get, together with Austrade, and I think we, yeah, we've, we've been doing really a lot the past three weeks. That's what I'm going to talk about. But just a few words about F10. F10 is a global innovation network focused on the fintech vertical. We work with more than a dozen corporate partners. These are leading financial institutions. And in the past six to seven years, we have incubated and accelerated over 250 um, startups so far. So yeah, we had, as mentioned already, we've been working with seven scale-ups from, from Australia. These are quite early to, to mature startups, um, regtech, fintechs, and you will hear um, shortly about them. But what have we been, been working on? Um, as mentioned already a bit in the introduction, I think it's very important to help the startups with coaching, mentoring, to find that product market fit and that go-to-market strategy into the Asian market because it is a different um, setup. It is different to go into the Asian markets than doing it just in Australia. Then we had a lot of business matching opportunities, so m several dozen uh, matchings with, with mentors, with corporates, with potential, potential partners as well and investors. And as we are having a pitch today, um, we had, of course, also some pitch training, as one does. And last but not least, I think very important is the Asia market access introductions, uh, as mentioned earlier, from Japan, India, Korea, Thailand, Philippines, where we had a number of um, experts joining to, to talk about these markets. But before we hear um, from the startups, I want to hand it over to Stephen Scully. Stephen is going to moderate today's panel discussion. Um, he's the Senior Trade and Investment Commissioner at Austrade, and we have a great panel um, that he's going to moderate. So Stephen, I hand it over to you. That's me. Um, so thank you, uh, Jonas, and uh, welcome everybody. Um, we are, uh, we are going to have one panelist um, who's going to join us virtually, so I guess that'll switch in. Um, good introduction by Betty around Austrade, but for those that don't know, we're a combination of um, Singapore's Economic Development uh, Board, EDB, and Enterprise Singapore. So we do both trade and investment inward and outwards to Australia. A fun fact, and I'm going to bring this up a few times, um, fun facts that is, um, <clears throat> there are rankings about which are the, the best fintech countries or environments in the world. Singapore is always ranked number one in Asia, but people may not know that Australia is number two. Right, so when we talk about the fintech bridge that is coming, um, the top one, two in fintech are joining an alliance. And I see people looking behind me, so it's a bit hard to... Uh, but um, the other fact, though, in that ranking was that um, Singapore was ranked number four globally. You can debate that, depending on the criteria. Switzerland was number five, and Australia was number six globally. So this combination of Austrad, uh, F10 in Singapore, we have four, five and six. It's nearly a, a straight in, uh, in poker. But uh, I think there's, there's great synergies and um, you know, I think there's great opportunities to leverage uh, the strengths of each countries and, ca and, and ca capabilities. I am going to try and get the audience involved a little bit. You know, you, you've had a free lunch and as we know, there's no such thing as a free lunch. Um, there's been a lot of reporting now that we're coming out of COVID, and I think Singapore's done it, Australia's done it, is that it has accelerated digital adoption. So I'm gonna ask the audience to raise their hands, and it's a yes, no answer. Raise your hands if um, digital adoption has increased in your business, in your sphere um, of interest. So yes, raise your hands. That's the majority of people, which is great. Any people say no? Okay, that's a win. Um, okay, just, just before I introduce the panellists, um, I am going to ask them a fun fact about themselves. So I thought I'd better show the way, a uh, bit, of, bit of leadership. But I too have a Swiss connection. I did my MBA on the, uh, on the shores of Lake Geneva in Lausanne at IMD. And um, funny enough, <clears throat> I met my wife there as well. And our first date was actually in Villa. And so within our cohort, MBA cohort, it was affectionately known as the Treaty of Villa. Um, and it, just another anecdote, um, 
the current mayor of Villar was actually on the course. And you know, you may have a picture of this um, mayor of this little little town, little village up in the you know, up in the mountains outside of Lausanne, as being quite a state old guy. <clears throat> Completely wrong. He was a 30-year-old hippie who'd spent too much of his life in Brazil. Um, so he was a real party guy. Um, to get the end of the story, you'll have to buy me a drink at some other time. But um, that's, that introduces myself. OK, so the panel. We've tried to mix it up. And um, we've tried to have an entrepreneur. And is John there? And then a high growth disruptor in Ben and a corporate VC. And Luca will, exp will advise me, I think, if I've turned him correctly. Um, and so there's three different perspectives. Now, I've tried to, um, I'll try to lead them in questioning about what you as an audience might want to hear. And of course, I've gone to the golden source of truth. I've stalked them all on LinkedIn. And so, um, you know, it must be absolutely true what they've written. So, um, John, are you there with us? Ah, there we go. Welcome. Okay, so apologies to the panellists. Um, I will let everybody else stalk you on LinkedIn to, to get, get to know your background. But, uh, but John, um, on your LinkedIn, there was a press release in Fin News Asia dated 9th of February uh, 2022 announcing Julius Barr, oh, by the way, I've messed up already, John Chan is the head of the Launchpad in Singapore for Julius Barr. Okay, announcing Julius Barr, a Swiss-based private bank, for those that don't know, chose Singapore over Switzerland to set up an innovation hub. Please explain uh, why that happened, why it was set up in Singapore, and what is the focus of your Launchpad? <laughs> Thanks, Stephen. Well, that, that's a tough question. I thought you were going to start off with, um, uh, with asking about a fun fact. <laughs> You can start with a fun fact if you like. First and foremost, uh, I do apologize that I'm not able to be in the room. Uh, it would have been fantastic to be in the room. Uh, and thank you so much uh, for uh, to Austria and F10 for having me uh, uh, on the panel today. Um, <clears throat> quickly on a fun fact, you know, I, one of the things that I've done in, 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 in my career has been to actually organize, prep and cook a barbecue dinner for 70 people um, by myself. <laughs> so that's a little bit of a fun fact for my for, uh, before I go into that. But coming to, to that, yes, I, I joined Julius Bear uh, about six months ago to set up Launchpad. And Launchpad is is our innovation lab uh, in uh, our, our first innovation lab globally. And is obviously as as, uh, as Stephen has shared, is, is based out of Singapore. Uh, we're building out a team here today. The team consists of six of us uh, within Launchpad itself. Uh, we're really looking at at one of the key focus areas for us is really about being that driver for innovation. Uh, for the bank um, and really looking at how do we actually solve problems for our clients. Uh, the reason why Singapore was chosen, I think, uh, um, you know, it's uh, one of the key things is really around Singapore is one of our key growth markets and also is <clears throat> is our um, uh, Asian headquarters itself. And I think for us is uh, we're really looking at seeing how we can actually tap on the whole uh, innovation ecosystem that is growing and has expanded significantly over the last couple of years in this part of the world to see how we can bring new solutions uh, uh, globally, you know, build out of Singapore to the world. This launch pad is an entrepreneur, intrapreneurial. It's, uh, can you just explain, it's, um, it's an in-house uh, focused launch pad. Perhaps you can just clarify that? Yes, that's correct. So we're, we're, a, we're an incubator accelerator for, for new ideas to tr try and test, experiment with new technologies. We're looking to build out new, new technology and digital solutions for the bank. But at the same time, you know, we don't just look at it internally. We, we don't just look at it from an inside, you know, inside out perspective. We also want to have bring the outside in. And that's where that's why we partner very closely with the F10. Uh, and that's how I know Jonas, uh, it, you know, to, to look at how we can actually partner with collaborate and co-create with, with fintech startups around the globe on a variety of different solutions. Today, you know, we, we have a very strong presence uh, today uh, with, with the F10 in, in Switzerland and also a strong partnership with them in, in, uh, uh, in Singapore on uh, running some of the programs as well. Okay, so thanks very much. Just one very quick last question um, for now. Um, your head office chief of staff recently visited Singapore and uh, she got an NFT. Uh, what was the NFT about? Well, we, we're, we're doing a little bit of an educational exercise around 
teaching our <clears throat> teaching our colleagues a bit about how how to engage with NFTs, how to use them, how to get them. So we we minted our own collection of NFTs. Uh, it's going to be you probably will see it in open sea in a couple of uh, uh, in a couple of weeks. Uh, you know, it, it's really for our internal staff to, to really give them that that you know that. Uh, that education, right, and give them the ability yeah. to kind of play around with it and understand how it actually works. Fantastic. Okay, thanks, John. Moving on, Ben Steen, CEO of Staple. Um, and oh, sorry, Luca, should you be joining us on stage? Sorry. Well, Welcome, guys. So Ben, um, Ben is obviously our fast-growing uh, disruptor. Uh, on the panel. So Staple, for those that don't know, Staple develops proprietary AI machine learning solutions to perform data capture, data matching and data management tasks faster, cheaper and more reliably than any human can. So obviously the market believes this and um, you're expanding very rapidly in ASEAN. So congratulations on that. But um, what is your expansion expansion model in, in ASEAN and the process you're using? Right, sure. Um... So one of the features that we offer is uh, multi-language capabilities. So being in this part of the world, uh, we're not just dealing in English, we're dealing with a number of languages. Uh, that's something our AI can handle, but that's something that our team uh, can't always handle that well because we don't speak every language uh, in the region. So we, we tend to rely on a, a partnership model. Uh, we're partners with uh, some of the big four accounting firms, uh, some of the large technology companies, uh, such as SAP and, and obviously partners with F10. So that way we can reach uh, you know, a lot more of the markets that we, we play in uh, more effectively. Uh, we are an enterprise focused solution. Uh, we do have uh, uh, most of our customer base in enterprise uh, and financial institutions, as well as the large mid-market companies across a number of countries in, in ASEAN. Okay, thank you. And fun fact. So uh, I, I started my, my career as, a, as an auditor, which is basically what, uh, what I like to think accountants do when they find ordinary accounting too exciting. <laughs> um, and over that time, uh, I've developed a pretty, uh, or over my career, I've developed a pretty severe coffee addiction, um, as, as do most Australians. Uh, so if anyone's open to a coffee at some time, I'd be happy to oblige. Great. Okay, last but not least, Luca, Senior Vice President, Venture Investment, Signum Bank. Um, if I understand your role correctly, uh, it is that you're a, you're a corporate VC in the world's first digital asset bank, which has dual head offices in Switzerland and Singapore. Now, just Australia is missing from the, that four, five, six uh, ranking I said previously. Um, Please explain how this corporate VC function fits in Signum Bank's strategy and what is your focus? Sure, um, thanks Stephen. Um, the way that we operate is we, we are a venture capital company or venture capital effort within a larger corporate, but we both work with external as well as internal money. So uh, it's kind of a mixed corporate VC, but we also take um, external money uh, for a very simple reason. Uh, as you said, we are probably one of the few companies that know regulated digital assets very well. Uh, so people come to us because that's what we do on a daily basis. Um, we have approximately 250 uh, people between Switzerland and Singapore um, that dedicate the day in and day out uh, the time to it. So um, that, that's, that's why people come to us. Great. And a fun fact, please. Um, as we're here with uh, the Australian uh, colleagues, um, I was once detained for a couple of hours in the, in Australia um, because I flew in uh, with my Italian. Uh, sorry, I flew out of New Zealand with my Swiss passport and flew in, in into Australia with my Italian passport, and they couldn't find me in my records. So, <laughs> <laughs> thanks. <laughs> okay, thanks for that. Okay, um, and John could nearly be Australian if he can handle a barbecue for seventy people. That's almost uh, PPR classification there. Um, Okay, audience, has COVID impacted your business strategy? Yes, please raise your hands. Uh, not quite unanimous. Uh, no, can you raise your hands if um, COVID hasn't impacted your business strategy? Okay, a, a few undecideds, but um, then I'm gonna go to you first, because you've been, you were established pre-COVID, um, probably three years ago or so. So you've transitioned um, just, you know, any sort of uh, thoughts you'd like to share about that transition through uh, COVID and has it shaped the strategy going forward? 
Yeah, so we, we started uh, 2019, so, so very much pre, pre-COVID, and we scaled the team through, through that time. Um, by necessity, we did that virtually. We did that across uh, a number of locations where we have uh, staff, but uh, I, I think a number of startups were forced into this uh, situation also where uh, it, it, was, it was impossible to, to work together in a, in a physical office as we did in the past, uh, but, but it did help us um, scale remotely or a virtual, t- virtual team across different locations. Great. Okay, Luca, so you started in this current role probably about a year ago, so at the height of COVID, um, brave move. Um, how's it gone? Has, has the strategy been tweaked um, as we move out of COVID now? I think, yeah, I mean, I started literally um, four days in, we went to full remote um, because seeing all the restrictions. So yeah, it definitely was a little bit different than, than expected. Uh, I think from our side, the, the way that we operate um, hasn't really been impacted much. Um, we are inherently a remote company being dual headquarters in Switzerland and Singapore. Um, in our case, specifically for the industry and sector that we work in, uh, we were not as much impacted because the macroeconomic changes on the digital asset side far outweighed the impact of COVID itself. Okay, and from the golden source of truth, uh, LinkedIn, you've been noted as texting, um, you are still early. What does that mean? So that specific post, um, I don't remember the exact context of it, yeah. but I get the gist of it. Um, when we look at digital assets, uh, it is something that in the last um, two years we have gone from, oh yeah, I've heard of Bitcoin, to most of us or many of us having at least a little bit just to try it out. So we've gone from the adoption to the awareness, but if we look at penetration rates of digital assets in uh, developed as well as emerging countries, the most um, developed uh, countries in this area still have a 20% penetration. Um, Western Europe is hovering around between two and 5%. Singapore is between seven and 10%. So we'll still have a way, long way to go. Okay, thank you. So John, um, you're the, the baby in terms of um, uh, the newest in, into role, um, nearly six months. Uh, you joined as COVID was tapering. Has, has, um, has the really uh, clamps coming off of COVID, has that changed um, the business direction at all, or strategy? No, I think I think for us is really we, we are doubling down on digital, right? We're double down, doubling down on technology. In fact, you know, and and, and the fact of the matter is, is that you know for us right now, you know, we're we're seeing you know people coming back into the office. We're seeing new ways of working. You know, uh, that that is really being fostered in the organization, right? Today, you know, where that the teams are now, the teams know how to do this. The team, you know, having experienced it for the last two years. Uh, but it has been a, a really exciting time, you know, to join an organization at the ta- you know at the tail end of this, right? And now being able to be back in the office is fantastic to get to know people. You know, I I changed organizations at the height of COVID, uh, and I must tell you, it was it is a challenging uh, it is a challenging piece to to go you know fully remote into a role, right? And and uh, and I've done it again uh, in uh, recently uh, to, to now to another organization, and I think. Uh, uh, I, I personally think that while well, digital is fantastic and I love and I love everything that's digital, uh, one of the things that for me is really about the social interaction, the relationships that you build, being able to just have a drink, have a coffee face to face, ideate right in the same room, is huge uh, compared to to just using a mural or mural. I think these days the team is really excited about being back in, and and I would say that you know what I've seen is. Uh, a lot of our, my colleagues are excited, right, to, to just come back in the office. Uh, you know, where we've since we started Launchpad, we've been running a ton of innovation workshops. Um, I think to date is.